So today I wanted to talk about the personality that victims of narcissistic abuse tend to have. And I'm not talking about their real personality. I'm talking about who they become as a result of the abuse. And this is true, whether it's childhood trauma that your parents were narcissists or from a long-term relationship. It's almost like we all get the same kind of personality. And so I want to explain what happens and how that happens. And more importantly, if you find that you identify with this, what you can do to get the real you back. And I always save my tips for the end. So make sure you watch the end if this resonates with you. That being said, let's dive in. For those that don't know me, my name is Michelle. I'm a trauma survivor myself. I am now a trauma-informed coach. I specialize in helping people overcome narcissistic abuse and CPTSD. I'm also a somatic experiencing practitioner and the founder of the Thriver School of Transformation, which is a monthly membership where we meet live every week and we do the inner work together. So if the videos are not enough for you, make sure you check out that resource. So something that happened to me very early on, on my trauma recovery journey, um, was I went to get help from someone because at that time I was like, well, I'm the problem, right? Because if you've been involved with a narcissist, they convince you that they're perfect. And after a long time of that type of manipulation, you start believing or thinking or suspecting that maybe, maybe it's you. So I went to get help for me because I was the problem. And as I was getting help, he told me, he was like, you do realize that you're in an abusive relationship. And sadly, a part of me was like, finally, she's, she's getting it. She's waking up. But this other part that was so traumatized was in shock. Okay. And then afterwards I asked him, I was like, well, how do you know that? And he said, people that have been in narcissistic relationships have a very distinct personality. And he went on to compare how he can notice victims of narcissistic abuse with an animal print. He's like, you don't have to see what type of animal was present. You can look at the imprint in the ground and know what type of animal it is by the imprint it leaves behind. And he said, and it's the same thing with narcissistic abuse. The imprint that narcissistic abuse leaves behind is very distinct, very clear, and very obvious. And that leads me into my topic today. The imprint that narcissistic abuse leaves behind is a personality, a traumatized personality that so many of us get stuck in. So before I go into some of the traits and characteristics of that personality, I first want to help you to understand why this happens. Because I know with myself on this journey, again, we're so quick to blame ourselves. We're so quick to be like, it's my fault. We're so quick to get upset with ourselves and not put the blame where it belongs, which doesn't help us on this journey. So when I learned this, what I'm about to share with you, it helped me to not go into that spiral of shame and self-blame. So I want to explain what happens to your brain as a result of narcissistic abuse. And this is why we experience these personality changes. So because narcissistic abuse, when you're in a relationship, especially with a covert narcissist, where everything is hidden and everything is confusing, what happens is we actually start utilizing different parts of our brain on a daily basis. For example, instead of living with our prefrontal cortex, our thinking center, our cognitive um, executive functioning center, instead of that being in charge, which is how we're supposed to live with that part of our brain in charge, we start using our midbrain 24 seven. And the midbrain is designed to be a, an important part of brain functioning and a, an important part of our life, but it's really there for when it's needed. In other words, for life and death or life-threatening situations, the midbrain kicks on and it kicks on and overrides our prefrontal cortex. Again, we need that to happen in a life and death situation. The problem with narcissistic abuse is that it ignites those areas of our brain 24 seven. That's why we use phrases like walking on eggshells. What we're basically saying when we say we're walking on eggshells is that we are living in a hyper alert trauma state. Our brain is vigilant to danger 24 seven. So we are out of the thinking areas of our brain and we are constantly in the survival areas of our brain. And that, that is why we experience so much change in our personality. 
So here are some changes that I experienced. You can let me know down below in the comment section if these resonate with you or if I missed any. When we are no longer in our prefrontal cortex, we lose what's called prefrontal attributes. Our prefrontal cortex, when it's activated, when we're living in that area of the brain, we have access to the executive command center, which helps us to pause in life. It helps us to reflect. We reframe, we forgive, we find solutions, we have compassion, there's joy. We're able to see the big picture. We're able to make clear decisions. However, when we don't have access to those things and we're stuck in our midbrain, we wind up reliving stress-based stories and responses over and over again. Our emotional center is highly activated. Our fear response is overactivated. We don't feel safe in our body. We don't have clear thinking. We have a loss of memory. We get stuck in negative thought patterns. Our brain is struggling with rumination, with highly intrusive thoughts, with feeling like something bad is going to happen. So we aren't ourselves. Rather than being ourselves, we live in this constant state of fear. When this happens for a prolonged period of time, we can get stuck in the five main symptoms of complex PTSD. And they are self-abandonment, toxic shame, having a harsh inner critic, social anxiety, and emotional flashbacks. Those five main components and what they have us feeling and doing become like our new personality. We're not ourselves. We are stuck flinging between those five main symptoms. For example, with emotional flashbacks, because the trauma is somewhere still alive and stuck in our body, our body is always on hyper alert to anything that reminds it of the trauma. And so we are overreacting. We are depending on our trauma response, whether it's fight, flight, freeze, or fawn, we're either in a highly active fight response where we get angry really quick, a flight response where we're doing, 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 so we don't feel, a fawn response where we are appeasing everybody to try to establish some means of safety, or a freeze response where we just feel stuck. And we think that that's who we are, right? That becomes like our personality, but it's not our personality. That's our trauma responses that are stuck. Very much like a car, a manual car, if the gears get stuck, there might be nothing wrong with the car except that the stick shift needs fixing. Well, it's the same thing with us. As a person, we are fine. We really are. And I know if you're resonating with what narcissistic abuse does to you, you do not feel fine. And I get it because I didn't feel fine either. But as I worked through the journey, I realized that I was fine underneath all those layers of trauma and what the trauma did and the personality and the coping skills that I developed because of the trauma. And so recovery wasn't about getting a new me because there was nothing wrong with the me that I was, it was really about unlearning all those layers that the trauma created and working through those coping skills so that I could get back to who I really was. I hope that makes sense. And so some of the things that you would find if you are struggling with narcissistic abuse recovery, and again, this could be, you could be in the relationship or you could be out of the relationship for years. And if you don't work through this, the personality stays stuck. It doesn't go away with time if you're in that traumatized state. So some of the things that you would notice is that you are probably very hypervigilant. When you go someplace, it's almost like, and, and this is what happens, it's like our nervous system kind of spreads out and is constantly scanning the environment. So you don't feel like you're just being and you're at the event or you're at the place that you're at. You feel yourself on alert scanning and looking for danger. You never feel safe in your body. You constantly have this dread or fear that something bad is going to happen. And so you're always gauging what you're doing and how other people are responding to you because you're trying to find a way to feel safe. You find yourself easily triggered. You have a hard time regulating your emotions. So when you are flung into fight, flight, freeze, or fawn, it can take days for you to feel like you have worked through that trauma response and are back in your body. And for some people, they feel like they are living a never-ending trauma response. They never feel present in their body as 
who they really are. Oftentimes it affects us emotionally. Again, some of those prefrontal attributes that we lose are joy, excitement, passion, creativity. And instead of being able to feel those things, we wind up stuck in emotional states like depression or anxiety or flinging back and forth between the two. We wind up being stuck with negative thoughts all the time. I know with myself, and this sounds so weird to say it, and if I didn't experience it, I think it would, I would have a hard time understanding other people that experience it. So for anyone that listens to this and is like, that's just crazy. That doesn't make sense. Maybe you don't have CPTSD. Maybe you haven't undergone narcissistic abuse because anyone that has is going to be like, Michelle, I get you. I hear you. But I went so long without laughing, which is so sad to admit, especially because I was known when I was young, I was known for being the kind of person that could never tell a joke because I'd be laughing at the punchline before I could get it out in, into words, right? So it was a complete change in personality, but I went so many years without laughing that I had to teach myself to laugh again. And this kind of shifts me into, well, what do we do if we start realizing that, yes, I now have the personality of somebody that has been through narcissistic abuse, this resonates, what do I do about it? This is the hard part because I know with myself and so many of you, you're like, okay, give me the answer so I can do this. And tomorrow on me, we have this intense need to want to like take our trauma and fling it outside of us so that we could just be ourselves. And we want it to be quick and painless, but it doesn't work that way. And that's something that I had to learn the hard way. So you might have to learn that the hard way as well. But the faster I tried to move on my recovery journey, the longer it was taking. I had to learn that it wasn't about getting rid of my trauma. It was about supporting my body where it was stuck because that's kind of why trauma gets stuck in our body is because whatever we're going through is too much, too fast and without any support. And so we're trying to heal it in the same way it was got stuck in our body, it doesn't work. We have to do things differently. We have to learn how to unlearn what our body and mind and our subconscious mind learned as a result of narcissistic abuse, which is the negative beliefs that are now running the show in our life. We have to unlearn those. We have to help our body to embody new beliefs because it's one thing to know with my mind. Like, I know I want to believe this about myself and my body's like, yeah, well, that's nice, but I believe this and getting the two to work together. That's the secret to working through narcissistic abuse. We can't do it with the mind only. And so many of us want to do that. I say that because I did too. I was like, well, can I just learn my way through this? Can I just learn what it's like to be safe? And then my body's just going to follow me. No, that's what happens when we're children. And we only have our subconscious, our body is following whatever we're learning in those years. But as adults, we now have two aspects of our brain. We have our technically three, but I'm just going to talk about the two right now. We have our conscious mind and our adult self, and we have our subconscious. And we have to help both work together after narcissistic abuse, which means the conscious mind is our thinking brain. Our subconscious is our body. We have to learn ways to help them to work together. And that's something that takes time. It takes patience. It, it's almost like going to a home. You think of a, a home that you want to flip, right? So you go to this home and it's really beat up and it's kind of on the outside. It, it really looks like it needs a lot of work, right? But the structure is sound and strong, but you have to go in and kind of remove the old parts that no longer serve the home, the old wiring, the old paneling, um, whatever is no longer serving it. And you have to install the new. Well, internally, we have to do the same. We have to remove the faulty old wiring that's in our subconscious. And we have to install and learn and embody new subconscious beliefs. We have to help our survival brain to no longer be in charge of our life. We want it there for when we need it. Just like in your home, you want your home alarm there for when 
it's needed. But imagine living in your house with your alarm blaring 24 seven. Imagine how that would disrupt you emotionally. Well, that's just a tiny piece of what it's like to have our midbrain and our survival brain on all the time. It affects every aspect of our, of, of our lives, of our inner peace or lack of inner peace. So we have to help that survival brain to learn how to only be active when needed. And I know that sounds like a lot. And it is, it is a lot because narcissistic abuse really causes a lot of destruction. It causes a lot of breakdown in your cognitive functioning in your emotional states, in your body, in your health. And so lasting change does take effort and time. But I just want to encourage you to be willing to give yourself that because if you don't, there's nothing worse than having to go through narcissistic abuse, right? That's awful, especially because the people that inflict narcissistic abuse are usually the people that you expect to love you and to be there for you. So it's awful to have to go through, but to stay stuck in it, even if the narcissist is gone, is even worse. So doing the inner work is worth it because you get you back. And if you're struggling, make sure you check out Thriver School of Transformation. So if you want to join us for the year and really be with other thrivers that are working through the same journey, that get it, that understand you, make sure you check out that link.